want to thank my lovely panelists today who as artists wear multiple hats in regards to our Latin Extreme showcase they all played pivotal roles which I will name for this particular project first we have Steph O director Sylvia Lara cinematographer Lorena Jorge actor and Angie Lopez editor you may or may not have all met on set so uh, I also know that the Latinx entertainment Circles are very small, so you're just making relationships and making new ones. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, the Latin Extreme Showcase was created about 10 years ago as a direct response to the excuse we often hear in Hollywood. We cannot find Latinx talent in Los Angeles, a city made up of 50% Latinx. And that's just the current statistic. I just want to emphasize that for everyone watching. I know you all worked on uh, various sets and I wanted to ask what it was like working on the showcase set. Uh, mind you, we filmed in a very well-equipped pandemic environment. It is very, it is different to be surrounded by, is it different to be surrounded by Latinx talent? And how does that speak to the culture that has been normalized and how it's changing in the overall entertainment industry? Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and tackle it <laughs> first to start out. Um, I, it, was, it was a lot of fun to be surrounded by all different diverse um people from different latinx communities um to have a commonality just off the bat is it's very heartwarming you know it's that familiarity that you all of a sudden feel like at home um when either someone speaks your same language or has your same kind of walk of path of being first generation american um so you naturally have a reference to to talk about and initiate a, a friendship um and it's it was a very supportive environment um i think that's kind of the culture that i'm looking to change to to see it more because i feel that because we have such poor you know representation and little bit of roles in all different aspects of film and production as well as in front of the camera um it creates this um, competitive mentality where it's like not all of us can get a piece of the pie. So it was really nice to kind of see that culture start to change where all different people can take on different roles and be supportive and really encourage the next generation and in changing that culture of, of really just women supporting women as well as uh, our community to support each other and know that we all can, we all can eat. There's enough to go around. You know, we just got to speak and create those roles to allow us to really shine in our own right and in our own authentic experience. I just feel like there's like a sense of community, right? It just feels like family when you're like working with people that are also Latinx. So like, I feel like I have intentionally always try to work with other Latinx crew and cast and all of that. So I think for me, that's like the normal. And I just want that to continue, like Lorena said, to continue to be the new normal where like we just feel safe in those spaces. Cause I feel like I have had some sets where like, that's not the case. And there's always like this sense of like push and pull with power. And like mm -hmm. when we're in a Latinx like set, like there is none of that. Right. It just feels like a giant, like, family and we're just all here to just create art and like we all care about the stories because they are mostly latinx stories that we're seeing on camera so there's just a sense of like community and understanding within each other so i think that that makes it really beautiful and like i hope we continue that for bigger projects in hollywood too we will definitely can i piggyback off that let me start by saying for any filmmakers that are watching, uh, you do not wear shirts like this on camera. You see that weird pattern? That's more. That's more. You don't do that. But anyway, moving on. Uh, what, I, what I was just talking about this on set today, actually, because there was a lot of uh, Latinx people on the set that I was on today. Uh, it was a um, high budget union shoot. Uh, but unfortunately, the majority of the people that I found that um, that you know, were from my community, they were not in positions of power. And that was a, an ongoing conversation with a few of us. Um, it feels like, and I, I don't want to necessarily generalize an industry overall, but more often than not, I have found that a lot of the culture is, you know, keeping information, not sharing, not helping one another. And I feel that on the Latinx set, 
there is an inherent community. And I feel that, you know, everybody usually tells me, oh, well, that's the way that Hollywood is. That's the way we, it is. That's the way it is. It's like, yeah, but does it have to be? Because I've seen the opposite, granted, on smaller sets, smaller resources, but we're coming on up. And I feel like this sense of community that we already have amongst each other has the power to change the way that the industry is viewed and the way that we work in it. And ultimately, in the environments that we are all going to be working in for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I want to speak, too, on, like, the post-production process of it. Not being on set. Um, but feeling the energy from what I'm watching, you know, and reading the stories that really reflected each director and the writer in their own way and just seeing it come to life and give that, that personality and that identity that I rarely see as an editor. Um, And like Steph was saying, like being conscientious of what art I make is very much Mm -hmm. something I put on, like, it's the first thing. What's the story about? And is it pushing the needle forward? Because if it isn't, you know, I, I don't know if I necessarily want to be perpetuating stereotypes or underrepresenting folks or just, you know, there's just enough of that out there. So where we can do it and make art that is biased for us, like this is, I remember being so excited when this opportunity came up and I was just like, I was like, I'm on. <laughs> There's like, I don't even like what, like we're showcase representing a lot of different folks from different communities and Latinos who are not just Mexican, by the way, for filmmakers and like mm-hmm. those Hollywood, like we got Puerto Ricans, we got Colombians, like we got all walks of life of Latinos who are coming together um, and really putting our stories on screen. And I think even with my way of working with the directors and getting to be able to do that shorthand and just vibing off each other and knowing those emotional beats and each story was an honor. And it was just a joy to work with each director and like cutting with the talent and cutting and seeing Sylvia's work, which I just, I don't want to not celebrate each and every one of us because I think it is so representative from what I've seen, from what it's at from where it's like when people see it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a joy. That's awesome. I love that. Um, I know it is. I'm super excited for the showcase. I know that it's coming together really well. And I did want to um, emphasize, I think one of our staff said this, and that is like being a Latina in the industry and being a woman in this industry, I think it just kind of adds that extra, you know, element of difficulty. I guess to say, say it nicely. And um, what do you all feel like as how, how is it to be in the industry as a Latina specifically? Do you feel like it, that has changed and, um, or is currently changing and what work needs to be done in that aspect? Um, a lot of the directors that I know um, that are Latina are kind of like in my level or like a little bit higher, but I feel like we've been ignored for most of Hollywood, uh, like just behind the camera. And like, it's, it's a bigger thing. It's like, even when I wanted to call myself a director at first, it was hard because it's like, who do I look up to that has that? And there's not there, there, they are out there and there's not many, but it's not our fault. It's the industry's fault for not uplifting us and bringing us up to that standard. And I've always seen like this stat with like features where it was like, there's like one Latina director who had like uh, a high budget film, like in the last 10 years or something. Right. So it's like things like that, that just like kind of, I want to like, yes, it makes me feel sad, but also it empowers me and empowers all the other people in my level that are like coming up. Uh, I know what I get it. I was like doing TV and all of that. I know there's a lot of great Latina TV directors and I'm just like, okay, so when can we get them the feature that has like a hundred million dollars? You know what I mean? Uh, so I just, I, I feel like, I feel like we're all really trying to help each other out to br- uplift each other. And also like, it can be up to us, but also it needs to be up to the people in power. And that's always, I'm always going to go back to that because there's, you know, the execs who green light all these shows, all these movies and all that, like need to give us that chance to tell our stories because there's a whole community, like the Latinx showcase will show like um, 
that wants to see these stories, right? Like that wants stories by us for us. So, yeah. I mean, I can say for sure in where I walk in life in this industry, it can be lonely, you know, being the only woman in a room in the space, let alone, you know, you know, that's predominantly white and male. Mm -hmm. Um, Post-production, it's difficult. And I think, I think it's so imperative to talk to young girls and talk to women and let them know, like, this is not a space that needs to be gatekeeped. And it's not nothing that you can't learn. It's nothing that you can, it's available and it, and it can be, and bestowing and giving that information and exchanging it is what's imperative. And I, I know knowing being a part of community, that's, that's something I try to do constantly because (laughs) it shouldn't be lonely. And that imposter syndrome that happens, like when you need to remind yourself, like, who do I, yeah, who do I reference? Who do I look to to say they did it or they know how to do it? So I must know too. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I don't want to overlook because I think that little voice in our head sometimes can grow really loud. And, you know, I think holding those in the positions of power accountable and say, this isn't enough yet. (laughs) Like we're making steps and strides for sure. And, you know, the initiatives that do happen, the showcases, the fellowships that are happening by folks of color, like that's not a coincidence because that has to, that, that power, I mean, we have to do it because I don't know if anybody else is going to do that, you know? Um, But as long as we're creating writing and being loud about it, like, I hope that this industry makes larger strides um, to open up the avenues to a lot more folks because it's way too narrow right now. I think I can go ahead and piggyback off of you, Angelica. I think it's really important to instill in, in our community that even though you might not necessarily have done a, a part, a position in production, or even necessarily been in front of the camera, it's not insurmountable. You know, it is possible. Um, me, I started, I'm an actor first and foremost, um, like Felicia said, but I, because of the poor representation and the the roles that, you know, I'm like, how many prostitutes, strippers, drug addicts, like, Mm-hmm. Come on, where are the roles where I see my mom on screen who was, you know, an entrepreneur and has her own business and came here without speaking a lick of English and managed to to find a way to put her family, you know, push it forward. And I started writing and it was something that was very um, intimidating at first. And it's like that whole imposter syndrome that you do definitely, like you said, you're like, oh, I've never written before. Like, am I, am I valuable here? And I can say that it took one of my friends who was a writer, you know, and um, I was just kind of like, well, he's a writer. He's getting paid. He's telling me he wrote my stuff. He like read my stuff. And he was like, Lorena, you're a writer. You're Latina. You have a voice. It is valuable. It needs to be heard. Your story is something that needs to be told. So I think definitely empowering anyone and everyone within our community that has a story to be able to be confident enough to put it forward and as well be willing to put in the work, you know, cause that's also another thing. Like I had to learn the formatting, you know, I had to start at Celtics and then go to first draft, you know, final draft and then go and started ultimately producing and then directing. And then all of a sudden these things, I'm just like, Oh, why did I ever doubt myself? <laughs> you know, but um, I, I did really appreciate the people around me that they were like, no, 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 you could do this. You could mm-hmm. totally do it. Why wouldn't you do it? And just pay homage and be able to share those stories. Cause I think we discredit how inspiring we can be um, because we, we go through life feeling like, Oh, I just did a small thing, you know? And they're like, no, 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 don't, don't make it so minor. It's huge. Every stride is big and, and we should celebrate each other and be able to tell like not, like take open those gates. And if we do know of anything that might not be necessarily perfect for that person um, to inform somebody else, that was a really 
a, a great blessing. I can say, I can shout out Myra, um, who worked with me with Cruz and Felicia on LA, because she sent me a casting for a project um, that they were looking at an Afro Latina. And I was like, oh, let me go. And I auditioned and I did a chemistry. I got a call back and a chemistry and I ended, I ended up booking the job. And I was like, that is, I was so grateful to see women supporting women and not feel, you know, if this isn't right for me, let me tell somebody, or even if it is right for me as well, let's see who, who goes and gets it and shines. Um, I think that's super important and making our voices loud. I think that's also, I think we're always scared to be in a room where we kind of feel like we, we, we found ourselves there by pure accident and we're scared of being kicked out. <laughs> But um, because I know I've been there, I'm like, um, I don't know. I don't know if that's the Afro Latino experience, guys. Like, and then they're like, what? You know, everyone turned to me when they did when they were talking about in the heights, and it was like, you're Dominican, you're from New York. <laughs> what's what's your take? <laughs> and I was like, oh. do I share? <laughs> but I was like, no. Let me share this. Let me take it. So to piggyback, definitely share the experience, make our voices loud, show that it's unacceptable to use our storylines, like writing our stories without us. That's not cool. Mm -hmm. Can I say one last thing on this? And everybody touched on really great points in that the way that the industry, industry is set up right now, it's obviously, you know, wasn't designed with us in mind from the beginning. It wasn't. Um, everybody made a point on that and I completely agree. And I'm with you guys, uh, turning it into something more inward and more micro, uh, as opposed to a macro is I've, I've realized, especially with what I do is, as a cinematographer is I have to know, and I have to study and I have to put in the work and I have to put in the experience to be ready for when I get called on and get told, okay, what are your ideas? What are you, what, what experience do you bring? Because most of us grew up storytellers as Latinos because, I mean, that's how we pass on, you know, family stories. We pass on history, et cetera. Most of us have a gauge on story structure, beginning, middle, end. Um, but if we don't, in our own respective fields, have put in the time, the energy, the hard work, the dedication in order for us to, to show that we're capable and we're skilled, those opportunities may not come our way. Um, so, you know, I would never, I would hate to show up on a set and rely on like my gaffer to do my work for me and to light for me and desi design for me because then I lose my voice and my bread and butter as uh, a cinematographer for that director. And the same goes with every other field. You wouldn't want to go into, um, onto set in your respective field and not have put in the work and the legwork in order to know what you're doing there. So there is also that responsibility on us to get ourselves up to speed. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know we're all very well aware of that. Um, I made a point to this once with my, um, with my group of cinematographers at AFI. It's like, I have to run circles around you guys just to get into the same room as where you guys are already tapped in to yeah. come into. Mm -hmm. And I'm well aware of that, but we're also not afraid of hard work. So we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's double to you. I think um because one of the questions that you had asked at the very beginning was like one of the biggest struggles in being a Latina um it is the fact that to be taken serious you know and piggybacking right. on you Sylvia yeah. the way to get serious is definitely right. to be ready you know I firmly believe luck is opportunity meeting preparation so it's like you have to be prepared in order for when that opportunity strikes for you to be able to deliver. Right. Um, one of the things definitely that I can say that I can speak on that we've all dealt with it, even in minor or major or whatever is, is sexism, harassment, um, the sexualization of Latinas, all these different aspects. Um, Cause that's something that I always was like, if I wanted to be on a billboard 10 years ago, I could have, I would have just had to compromise my integrity and my morale. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely, um, I'm not about to do that. And it's one of those things that also has to be spoken about, has to be, um, when it happens to be pointed out, 
Um, and I know that there's been positions where even by myself, I'm just like, mm, I think, sabes, el, el refrán calladito te ves más bonita. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's also not being afraid to when those circumstances do happen to speak mm -hmm. on that. Absolutely. And I think so too, where it's like having to be so prepared, like speaking on Sylvia, what you're saying, like preparation is a hundred percent keen. I think there's that voice where it's like, stay up late, put in the hours, put in the work because you can't really afford to lose or look, be made a fool because people are going to already second guess you the minute you walk in the door. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish it wasn't the case, but gosh, it is. <laughs> and to be undermined, in a public space, um, it's just, it, it's like, it's, 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 it's forced to put in that work, like that work and that work ethic and be three times stronger in my, you're well-versed and knowing not only American culture or cinematographers or artists, but also knowing that of our own, our own communities and our, our own artists. And I want to say that's such a strength. I don't know if people realize like how much we're well-versed in not only American culture, but our cultures, our languages, our icons, our stories. That's so dope. Like nobody think like talks about that. And I feel like it's, it should be celebrated and it is something to commend. Um, and when you're entering those spaces and working three, five times harder than the next person who might have the privilege, honestly. And, and I think every person, whatever, where you intersect on that privilege and what you can do with it and, Oh, again, it comes back to gatekeeping, right? I feel like that's always the obstacle here in any industry that we're working or any profession and trying to open up those gates a little bit more, <laughs> a lot more actually, let's just open them up, you know? <laughs> um, but it, it's, you know, I think hopefully again, strides. Yeah, and I think what you said earlier, um, Angie, in terms of like making sure the next generation has the resources and has all of the tools that you guys have just to make it that much more, I don't want to say easier, but more accessible to make this a reality. Because I've grown up in LA my my whole life and I didn't know, like, I was like, I'm not, I can't be an actor. And I thought like that was the only job in Hollywood, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not, I don't want to be an actor. Like, I don't, you know, and being in a, like very niche, like a nonprofit Latinx entertainment um, job and a role, like like a lot of things intersected for me. And it was really cool to have that. Now I am interested in the entertainment industry. I think that's awesome. And I know that, you know, I can do that and have the resources to do it. So it's very like self-fulfilling to see all of that. Um, and Lorena, I did want to mention that, uh, you know, to what you said earlier about the sexualization of women in any space, really. Uh, our president and CEO, Brenda, likes to remind us as often as she can, and she's very valid in it, is that the Latina is the most sexualized on screen. So mm -hmm. it, it is very real and it is very much a reality. So and I think it is tough for you as an, as an actor and as Latina actors, actors to, do, to deal with that constantly. So. And I think it's our job to like um, educate because unfortunately, you know, in doing the la the short that I wrote um, that right now is in film festivals, Black as a New Brown, um, I worked with a director who's half white and half Latino, male. Um, and it was amazing for me to learn how some people aren't aware of certain things. You know, we had to actually have a conversation because in the actual script, he was like, it, it seems like you're making like women of color seem like they're more sexualized than women than than white women and I was like because they are <laughs> and, I, and I was like are we having this conversation like and he was like no I think all women are sexualized I was like okay so real quick think of all the projects that you think of like series movies who are the strippers who are the prostitutes who are the mistresses who are the sexy maids who are the like and it was amazing for me to see, uh, you know, him say, wow, I, 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 I didn't even think about that. Lorena, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, and that was a moment for me where I was like, I was like, oh, so this isn't really known, huh? 
when people don't see it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's where for me, I was like, in everything that I write and I produce, there is a level of education. I feel like it is my responsibility as a storyteller to educate in an area that might not be necessarily inherently known. Um, and that was an eye opening for me where just because you're half Latin or full Latin or, you know, female, male, everyone's walk of life is different and experience. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they might have been exposed to it. Um, so to be that person to kind of point that out and have that open conversation without fear of judgment is super important, super important, and can ultimately change the narrative, at least push it forward. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And speaking of changing narratives, um, I want to end on a positive note. And uh, you guys all had great things to say. And I just want to know who is a woman in your life that has made an impact or an influence on you and whatever it is in your life, in your field in particular. I'm going to say my sister and my mom, my sisters and my mom, like they work, they obviously they don't work in this industry, but they show me what it really is to be a strong woman and not strong in the sense that you always have to be hard and you have to be strong. You have to put a good face on like, no strength to me is when you struggle and you can ask for help or when things aren't exactly going the way that you thought you, they should, or they would and, and keep, giving it all you can, you know? I, I think those are two people in my life that I look to and just, I'm grateful to know that it, being a woman and being a Latina woman, like what that looks like and those vulnerabilities and that there are strengths outside of what we're supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to be as Latinas, right? Fear, strong, loud, like, and I think it speaks to how dynamic we can be as women as Latinas especially, um, those are definitely people, women in my life that are like icons. That's awesome. I'm glad you have strong women. Um, someone for me is a mentor, like what was my boss, Linda Yvette Chavez from Hentified. Um, I got to, like she reached out to me like way before when I was still at my old job and um, we got to connect. And I, I think seeing her work through this industry as a Latina, like really has helped me kind of learn how to do it myself. And I think something that she's always like talking about is like taking care of yourself. Like, yes, work as hard as we can and do all these things, but also still take care of yourself. Right. So for me, like uh, when I was her assistant, um, she was always like, yes, do this, but like, don't forget it. Like weekends, like don't open your email, don't do this. And like, that's something that's really been instilled in me. Like just making sure you really have that like work life balance, you know? Um, and I think it's really important for us in this industry because we work long hours. We do so much, we do this, this and that, but it's like, okay. But again, like still come back to yourself. Right. So I think that's something that she's really done for me and really uh, like helped me believe in myself, you know, like with my writing to like Lorena and also like with my directing and just being kind of like getting that confidence. Right. Um, so I think she has done a lot for me, like where I am right now. And like, I know in the future we'll continue to do it. So yeah, I'm very grateful to have someone like her in this industry. Um, I don't know if uh, how familiar everybody here is with the uh, CDI, with Chicana Directors Initiative, but it's a group of uh, Latina directors. Uh, well, I should say female identifying, uh, Latinx identifying directors and DPs. I work with several of them and with each and every single one, I learned something new. Um, Luisa Novo, for example, comes from a lot of uh, experience from the AD world. And what she brought in as a director was such efficiency. I uh, work with Steph. Um, what she's brought in has been a lot of uh, collaboration and creativity. Um, and I think every time I work with Steph, it's been just collaboration back and forth of, okay, what's the best idea and what's the best way to get it, get this story across. 
Um, I've also worked recently with Sylvia Ray. Uh, and these are all Latinx female identifying filmmakers who are working really, really hard. Sylvia, for example, is a mother of two and is still, you know, no matter what, I mean, not that it's one thing or the other, but she's doing both. Mm -hmm. She's both fulfilling a career for herself as a director, as a mother. And she's showing me like, wow, we really can't have it all. So those are only a few, but I know I've worked with a lot of the other women from CDI and you guys should look into them if you haven't heard of them yet. Definitely. Well, um, I think, uh, I, I definitely want to say my mom as, as the first and foremost, the foundation to allow me to, to dream and to dream big, um, for her to be the kind of the set, the example, uh, I, I think that it enabled me, but I want to say I'm a, I'm a firm believer of my tribe. Like my, it starts with my mom, but my mom gave me the, the beauty of looking at women as, as colleagues and peers and, and not as competition and not as, um, as, 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 as empowering, you know, um, I think that's something that I would love to teach the the next generation of girls to look at each other with eyes of support and love. Um, and that, that my mom gave me and has enabled me to create such beautiful friendships and, and work relationships within all the women from my fellow actors to my DPs. Um, I I'm about, about to be ready to launch a crowdfunding campaign of of an all women team. We shot a pilot, um, sizzle. So everyone from the sound to the cinematographer, all female and each and every single person like you, um, Sylvia has, has enabled me to learn something from them and has given me the confidence when I lacked it and the resources when I needed. Um, so even you, Felicia, you know, you you fall into my tribe. Definitely. Um, a person that has pushed me and has given me the opportunity and has been there as like a cheerleader. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. Oh, thank you. And my tribe is growing, which is what I love about being part of this panel. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You are all resources to each other. I love it. I am so excited to see what the showcase opportunities come all of your way um where can we find you outside of the showcase that will come out <laughs> where can we find you on social media um what's the best place to reach out to you all instagram is definitely for me um lorena jorge 22 um is the easiest and best way i'm a little old school i am like I'm the person that when you DM me, I'm like, here's my number, text me. <laughs> so that would be an initial entrance, but you'll definitely have my number. <laughs> Cause I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm old time. Like I want to talk, I want to get on the phone. I want to meet in person. I want to develop a relationship and, and take it to the next level and see how we can, you know, help each other grow. Definitely. Angie, where can we find you? Um, uh, I, I think it's angelicalopez.post as <laughs> Instagram. Um, that's my, my work one. <laughs> uh, I have a personal one too. If you want to, you know, you can message me there. <laughs> um, but that's, uh, yeah, I feel like that um, message me or my email <laughs> post.angelicalopez at gmail.com. Um, that is usually those two ways that you can contact me. Um, I'll post a lot of my work on my Instagram, um, basically what I'm working on for editorially in post-production, um, whether that's my freelance work or what I do at Company 3, um, a lot of what I showcase is on Instagram. So that's more of my work one. Do we get Company 3? I do, yeah. I'm an uh, artist. All right. so cool. <laughs> right. On day, season two, season finale, it's out. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Angie knows what she's doing, for sure. <laughs> Um, Steph, I, I just want to shout out Steph's nails. 
Oh yeah. Oh, I've been looking at the. They're always like uh, these are where so I, I get creative, y'all. I, <laughs> I love, love the it. rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I decided to go. I decided to go '90s old school yesterday, and I'm bringing back the square French tip. Oh <laughs> yes! Throwback. <laughs> um. Uh. You can find me on Instagram. It's its underscore stuff o o h. Um. And I just wanted to say I don't think we talked about it, but like I am so grateful, Felicia, for this for the Latin Extreme Showcase reconnecting me with Sylvia and having her be my DP and like connecting me with Angie and just like she mentioned the shorthand before like it was just so like homegirl-esque you know like with me and Sylvia was like homegirl and then Angie imposed homegirl and I'm like I love it like I just love you know being able to kind of just feel like we're just working together collaborating on something um so thank y'all for that um but yeah that's where you can find me and Sylvia um, as far as social media, it's at the Sylvia Lara. So just how my name spelled, it's Sylvia with an I, not a Y. And um, otherwise, I I was recently signed to an agency, Sun with Zero Gravity. And <laughs> so I, I'm with Zero Gravity now, and you can find me on their page as well. I'm on their roster of EPs now. That's awesome! Congratulations! Thank you. Yes, absolutely. On that, follow it all, you three. <laughs> thank you. Lena is on it. She always is. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the energy and all of you ladies coming together and just making the showcase wonderful, which I'm excited for everybody to see, but also taking the time to be here. So thank you so much. And I can't wait for us to see each other in person and celebrate this in person. Also, shout out Brenda Castillo. Because, man, she is a legend. And even seeing her work, too, um, was so dope. She did a horror film. Can't wait for everybody to see it. it Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun to edit. Horror is so much fun. And I can tell she had fun on set. It's it's going to be it's gonna be dope. You know, no one's mentioned this, but uh, just on this panel, we we kind of have the main components for us to make a movie. We got director, we got editor, we got actors, we got a DP. Just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, we're you're right. gonna go get drinks. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have the program that I'll send out once the showcase comes out, and you all can get together and please do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a great day, ladies. Bye. Have a good one.